Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this early Saturday morning. We are trying a new platform of educating you in the morning so that you can have a wonderful day. My name is Jen. I am the community activator for the Border Crossings Project at the Art Gallery of Mississauga. Just to let you know, this session is being recorded so that we can put it on YouTube so that if you want to go back to learn more and get some, take some notes, it's going to be there. And we would love to hear back from you. We will be sending a follow up email with the link for the YouTube. And if you have any more questions that you wanted to ask, you can send it on there or you can add it in the chat. I'm going to be here the whole time. And at the end of the session, then uh, Zongwei will answer them. I'll ask and she can answer them. So we are going to be putting you on mute. If you have a question, you can either, you know, chat, put it in the chat or you can put your hand up and then I will uh, check it out with you and we can have a private conversation or we can have a group conversation. So before we start, I'm just letting more people in. We would like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather and which the region of here operates. It's a part of the treaty lands of the territories of the Mississaugas of the credit. And for thousands of years, indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa people. The land that is home to the Metis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit's First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. So we are grateful to have this opportunity to work on this land and by doing so give our respect to its first inhabitants and we continue to respect this land as we move forward with today's workshop. I see some familiar faces, Marika, hello, looking fabulous. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, just put it in the chat. I'm always here, but I would love to introduce to you Zongwei. Crystal Hardy, Zongwe Benisi, and I'm going to add her to the spotlight, take myself off, and she's going to do her thing and teach us about podcasting. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me and Chimi Butch for everyone who's been here so far and anyone that's going to be joining on YouTube after. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. Um, hello, Buju, Zongwe Benisi, Kwe Dishikaz, Makwado Dem. And that means I'm Sounding Thunderbird Woman, and I'm from the Bear Clan, and uh, I'm a member of Rocky Bay First Nation, which is in Northern Ontario, and I'm living and working in Thunder Bay. So um, my English name is Crystal Hardy, and um, you can call me Zhongwei or Z or Crystal, so thank you so much. And uh, I'm really excited for today because I'm going to share a bit about um, storytelling um, and a bit about how I use storytelling for social change, but also, you know, as my voice is medicine and um, hopefully we can do the same. So I'm gonna share a PowerPoint and kind of chat as we go, but um, I won't be able to see the chat, but uh, as Jen said, she'll be checking on that for us. And if there's questions throughout, um, just put them in there and I'll try to address them as we go. And I'll try to leave a lot of time at the end so we can kind of have a discussion because it is about sharing and kind of exploring what our voices wanna say. Um, the other piece of it, I'm going to kind of have it a semi workshop format. So like, you know, have your pen and paper kind of there, a sketchbook, whatever you feel comfortable having, jotting down your ideas, things like that, because um, it'll, there'll be some prompts as we go and, and I'll sort of give examples from my own podcast and sort of the process that I go through as well. So, okay. So. I forgot to do one thing before we go forward. Oh, yes. I'm just going to launch the poll. Um, guys, will just be really, really quick, just so to see if you've participated in the program before and what area you lived in. I'll just take two seconds. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Thank you very much. There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, give me one second here. For some reason, it's going, it can, maybe I'm not a co-host yet. Can you double check? It's saying one participant can share at a time.
I'm just going to make you the host, okay? So now, um, if okay. I try and unmute, <laughs> you, just take, you just take over the workshop. Hold on. Okay. Hopefully, I can hand it back to you after. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Technology, our favorite, right? And now it still won't let me. Interesting. Okay, here we go. No, I got it. That, uh, okay, so introduction to podcasting. So this is, we have about an hour together. I'm happy to stay a little bit after um, for people who, you know, want to just chat a bit more, but it is an introduction and um, I purposely didn't bring all my gear and wear all of it because, you know, the big part of podcasting is a lot of preparing and it's a lot of, um, you know, building that story, understanding why you want to have to have a podcast, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to kind of explore that stuff today. So uh, like I mentioned, I'm Zhang Wei Benise Kue. My English name is Crystal Hardy, and I'm a two-spirit Anishinaabe storyteller. And I'll tell you a little bit about storytelling in a bit. So um, about a bit of an outline. Again, I'm going to talk about Anishinaabe storytelling, um, why people might want to be interested in podcasting, what are some of the steps to start a podcast? Um, looking at podcast artwork, which is a big piece of your podcast because that's the first thing that actually people see. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take a little drink here. The other piece then, um, just a quick um, overview of the equipment and software that you might be looking at um, and editing and publishing because, you know, there's the interview piece of the podcast or, or the, the storytelling piece that you're using, but there is, you know, there's a pre-production piece, the stuff you do before you do the recording, the recording piece, and then the after stuff that you do. So um, you want to really be passionate about what you're doing because, you know, it takes a, a bit more work than you might anticipate at the start. And that was something I, I learned myself. <clears throat> So um, I'm sounding Thunderbird woman. Um, Thunderbird people in my culture are messengers. And, um, and so I've really embraced that. I've been doing a lot of my own healing and um, um, I've been trained as a nurse practitioner. I worked with indigenous populations um, my entire career in the past uh, 10 years as a nurse practitioner and five years before that as an RN. And I'm a PhD candidate in nursing at Queen's University. And I'm actually looking at storytelling as medicine and doing um, an autoethnography, which is basically a self-study on, on my own story and how my cultural story and my history and my personal history and my family history basically affects my own story on the world and how I care for others as a nurse practitioner, um, as a mother, um, as you know, a person in this world. And um, I've noticed that there's a lot of, um, you know, compassion fatigue in all of us, we're very tired. And it's um, because we are givers and healers and we share with people. And so we have to do um, a lot of self care for ourselves. So, you know, sharing our story and using our voice is, is very much medicine. So I'm hoping that's something you can take away from today. Um, I am a mother, I, uh, I'm a daughter myself, I'm a survivor of childhood abuse. Um, but I am most uh, most of being of light. And uh, I'm really trying to embrace, you know, my spirituality and everything and being very holistic being on this earth. And um, it's a journey for sure, right? So voice is medicine. So I started to really reflect on how patients tell their stories about their symptoms, right? I would ask them, tell me about how you're, you know, how that came about, or when is the pain bad? Or like, tell me about your family, like all of those kind of things. And that's narrative based medicine, right? If we talk about those in Western terms, right? So it's going, you know, using your voice to express yourself to be heard by somebody else to be affirmed that you're not alone in feeling that way, or that someone is like, I'm not, I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here for you, right? I'll hold space for you. Um, and that's very important for trauma survivors. And I myself am a trauma survivor of, of sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. And um, it's very important for me to be able to share my voice because as a child, and um, even sometimes now it doesn't feel safe to share, right? It's, um, there's a lot of fear there. And so the more we can embrace our authentic selves and our voices um, and not judge ourselves and not judge other people, I think it's really important. And we know that words are, you know, there's more to storytelling into our voice than words, right? We, and when words aren't enough, this is where art comes in, where music comes in, prayer, dance. And, and you know, this picture really shows like, this is like when I'm kind of in my Zen, right? I've got my computer, I've got my journal, I've like, I have 
I use crayons a lot to color. I do expressive. I do art therapy for myself. I, I'm a musician. I play guitar. I sing. I hand drum. I paint. Like, basically, I, I use anything I can to express my emotions because for so long, I felt like I wasn't able to and I wasn't safe to do that. And really, when I look at art, you know, I do art as ceremony, it gives me an awareness of myself and, and how I see myself in the world and what messages I need to receive from my higher self and from the universe, creator, you know, God, whatever you, you think is, is a higher power. And I want to use storytelling uh, to make social change. And, and storytelling is nonviolent resistance. It's a reclamation of space, right? I often talk about decolonizing. And what that means to me is, is, is sharing space with Western ways of knowing and being, right? It's like right now, Western ways of knowing and being are the dominant way. It's like all we, we know and everything else is the other or, you know, complementary or whatever. And so, you know, um, sometimes it can be hard because it's the way we've always done things, right? And so this is when we can share our story, stories and perspectives, we can understand each other better and be more compassionate. Um, but we can also, you know, be medicine for each other and be very healing. And this is how we can change, you know, um, like really change uh, our communities and, and ourselves. But it starts with us kind of understanding what our story is. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I guess I should also talk about this piece here that um, in the picture, this is another way that I've done, you know, storytelling through art and through um, you're trying to make social change. So, you know, jingle dresses in my culture, um, traditionally, uh, I have it over here. I'll just show you quick. Hold on. So you can see this is my jingle dress and the jingles are healing. And so when we dance in, in powwow, it's ceremony, it's to heal, it's to connect with our ancestors, connect with Mother Earth, all of that, connect with each other. And so this piece, I wanted to, you know, raise awareness about missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. And my mother um, is presumed to be murdered by Robert Picton. So, and my brother was also murdered a few years ago. So I, I have a lot of traumas in my family that I, I feel that, you know, I'm not alone in that. And um, so this piece I created um, with the help of my daughter um, was in place of the jingles, um, I will show on this next page, it might be easier to see, um, was the generic photo of um, what they use on the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women database for people um, who are unidentified. And um, basically, you know, when you're, when I'm dancing and walking with it, it's silent, right? And so, those those people have lost their voices. We don't know where they're at, where they are. They're missing, and you know we need to we need to share their stories. We need to make sure that they are acknowledged so that they can pass over in a good way. So you know this is a big part of why storytelling is important to me. But in my culture and in all our cultures, it's a way that we share knowledge and we teach each other, right? And and we always talk about showing instead of telling. You can tell someone this is how you do this, this, and this. But when you do it together, you demonstrate or you do it through folk, folklore, prayer in different ways, stories like, you know, it's it's people can <clears throat> get a context um, as well as a definition, which is a really hard thing to do in a lot of ways. And it's essential in the way we nurture and educate our children and we can adapt our lesson to the audience. Right. And the big part about or oral storytelling is um, you know, once you write something down, it feels so finite. It's like, well, on that day, like this was written and that's, you know, that's the truth. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink. So, you know, when you have oral storytelling too, it gives you the opportunity to change and adapt the story as you learn and grow yourself because we're always learning and growing. And that's the point of, you know, you know, learning and understanding and knowledge and teaching. So. I wanted to share um, <clears throat> just a quick little uh, excerpt from this book, which is called um, Embers, and it's um, by Richard Wagamese, and he's passed over in the spirit world, but uh, he was an Ojibwe journalist and storyteller, and he's one of my like major role models. And this book is called One Ojibwe's Meditations. So here I just wanted to share um, uh, just a bit about storytelling. It's just like a quick, uh, just a little paragraph. In the deep snows of the winter, there are stories hovering around us. 
They are whispered by the sounds of our ancestors, told in the ancient tongues, told in the hope that we will hear them. Listen. In the drape of moonbeams across a canvas of snow, the lilt of birdsong, the crackle of a fire, the smell of smudge, and the echo of heartbeats of those around us, our ancestors speak to us, call to us, summon us to the great abiding of the truth of stories, that simple stories well told are the heartbeat of the people, past, present, and future. So I just find that so powerful, just in that paragraph. I almost got chills from that. No, I didn't get chills from that. So, you know, I just, um, I just think it's so important that we do share our stories and, and, you know, all of our stories are unique. No one can tell your story like you can. No one's had your experiences. And it really, you know, there's so many stories that haven't been told yet about people um, who are, you know, Black people, Indigenous people, people of color, Two-Spirit people. We need all of your stories. So uh, one way that I share my storytelling is through Z's Place on CILU. I got like representing my shirt here. <laughs> so I'm decolonizing, decolonizing your airways every Wednesday from two to four. And basically I have a two hour weekly show. It's a community radio show in Thunder Bay. And um, I'm featuring indigenous and non-indigenous um, musicians who are promoting you know, change in their music. Um, I feature protest songs. I play a lot of like Cat Stevens. Um, I play a lot of A Tribe Called Red, which, who is now a hallucination, you know, all kinds of things. And um, I think it's such a really good op opportunity for myself to just go, wow, like I can actually do this, right? And so, you know, being trained as a nurse practitioner and done a lot of, you know, my career has been in healthcare, you know, moving toward using my voice through this medium and other mediums has been very different, um, but very interesting. So trying to combine all of those pieces of us and knowing that like, you know, you could start a podcast today, you know, it's, it's very low entry to do that. And, um, and that's how I started my own podcast a few years ago. Um, and so in my podcast is called Under the Same Stars. And so I'm highlighting Indigenous and non-Indigenous people that are working together and creating positivity and unity in their communities across Turtle Island. And so I have interviews with people who are using their business to make changes or to um, promote, you know, positivity, um, how they're, you know, volunteering their community, all of these kind of things, events that they're having. Um, as well as my own narrative episodes, just exploring my own healing journey, connecting to my culture, reclaiming myself and reclaiming my voice. And so a big piece of that was um, an episode that was, um, you know, called Complex PTSD. And I said, I'm not, I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet, but I do have complex PTSD and um, that's post-traumatic stress disorder. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, issues with sharing my voice and being vulnerable. And uh, when I use my voice as medicine, it really helps me through these things. So when I started my podcast, um, I was just like, I knew I wanted to tell a story. I was listening to podcasts myself and I just wanted to, you know, really um, highlight other people who were doing great things because I was really seeing in the media and in, um, you know, reinforcements of stereotypes of Indigenous people, you know, and um, Duncan McHugh says like the 40s, like you're either dead, drunk, um, dancing or drumming, right? And so I wanted to feature Indigenous people with agency like myself, like that who were, you know, working really hard to, you know, break cycles of disadvantage in their family and overcome feelings of like learned helplessness. Um, and that's been a journey for me. And I still struggle with that. There are still days that I go like, I don't know if I can do this, right? But knowing we're all on a journey together and just being kind to ourselves and each other. So when I started it, I started just with my iPad and I was just like, had my, you know, headphones, like very low entry, you know, trying to just hear how my voice sounded. And of course, usually at first you're like, oh, I don't like the sound of my own voice and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's really interesting. So as we go, I'll sort of use my own podcast as, as sort of an example in my own journey. And, and you know, I, I look at it now and I go, wow, like I've grown a lot since the start, right? So I'm just going to take a peek here to make sure that uh, we have, because um, I just recognize that I'm actually the, um, the host of it. So I just want to make sure that no one else is waiting in here.
Okay, great. So people, okay, thank you so much. I see that Jen is answering in here. Thank you so much. Okay, so we'll continue on here. Let's take a quick drink um, and start thinking about like, well, what is a podcast? And um, if you if you listen to podcasts, start jotting down like which ones are the ones you listen to? What keeps you listening to them? Um, and, you know, what would you like to hear from a podcast? Or, you know, what are your own ideas? Okay, so a podcast is really, um, it's an on-demand series of episodes of spoken word, and it's related to a certain topic. It's for entertainment or education. Very vague, I know, but that's the beauty of it, right? And so podcasting is still a very, very new um, area, and um, you'd be surprised how many um, opportunities there are for voices there. So if you think about a podcast, I could almost like relate it to um, like a TV series, right? So it's like an episode, you can have episode formats, you have series formats, but this is um, what you would listen to. You can listen to it anytime you want. Um, people subscribe to it. You can listen to it for free. There's paid um, options, that sort of thing. But each episode essentially is an audio file and it's uploaded to a hosting platform. And that's something like Anchor, uh, Buzzsprout or Bodpeen. Um, and uh, Anchor is the one I use myself. And uh, much of these are open source or free, which is really great. And then you would um, put them into um, apply for, or some of these um, podcasting hosting platforms apply for you to different podcast directories. And that would be Apple, Spotify, you know, Google I or Google Podcast, I or tune in, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, I put a link here, and I know that the um, I'm not sure if the slides will be shared, but essentially, um, you know, the directories, there's, there's so many, but you want to go through and, and find out, you know, is there someone that has the same name as you're thinking about? What are the people doing in that same topic? All of that kind of stuff. And um, I'll, I'd be happy to actually put these links also in the chat um, at the end. So there is an auditory, it's an auditory medium, but we know, like I mentioned, you know, the cover art is important. It's like the first thing that people are drawn to. You can see there's a few examples here of some indigenous, um, some indigenous uh, podcasting uh, that are coming up, which is, you know, a really interesting medium for indigenous um, storytellers because it gives an opportunity for a long format. Like you can make a podcast be as long as you want or as short as you want about really anything you want. And so that's really beautiful. Um, there's that written uh, component and visual, and you have to make sure, you know, even though you're listening to it, um, a big part of it is actually when people are searching for it, right? So again, there's, there's pieces to it that um, there's kind of pre-planning, post-planning, all that kind of stuff, or sorry, post-production. Okay, so why podcasting? Um, like I mentioned, entertainment and education, um, again, much like a TV episode series, um, usually there's long-term content. So you're building an audience and, and you're building um, an intimate connection with that audience. And that audience is going to listen anytime, anywhere. And you want to have something consistent for a relationship with them. So if you're going to, you're going to launch an episode once a week or once a month, you know, it's something that, you know, you have a relationship with your audience that they're like, oh, okay, I know that on Mondays, you know, he's going to launch this thing, right? So um, it's also, again, using your voice, sharing your voice, using your voice as medicine and knowing that your story is unique and special and um, people are, are going to love that. And, um, you know, thinking about this, there's at least 600 million blogs, um, 23 million YouTube channels and around only 800,000 podcasts on Apple Podcasts right now. So that means for every podcast, there are about 750 blogs and 29 YouTube channels. So there's still tons of room for voices and uh, we need your voice. So how podcasting works, like I mentioned, there's like uh, before the recording, the recording phase, and then the after recording. So the pre-production or the pre before you're recording is like, is like really where you're going to work smarter, not harder, basically. So this is where you're doing your planning and your research, you're booking and prepping your guests, you're making outlines for each episode and you're collecting different sound clips, um, any media you wanna to add to it, you're testing all your gear and your setup. And then, and then you get to the recording and I'll go through all of this um, individually as well, but just to give you a sense of, of overall how it works. And then um, in the recording, you're gonna, when you're getting ready or again, you're gonna test your setup again, all your gear, make sure all your stuff's working, you got backups, you got plugins, all of the things. 
Um, you want to keep track of your time. I, I know myself, I, this is something again, that might be something I need to double check myself. Um, because I am a storyteller, and I like to talk and spirit speaks through me, um, I have to be very conscious of my time. So making sure that if you have a structure of your podcast, where it's about half an hour, you want to stick to that so that people are not like, how come this episode so long, or, you know, maybe make it into two parts if you need to. Um, giving yourself, you know, prep time, you know, giving your, you know, your vocals a chance to get ready. This is an early um, workshop for me, so I can tell that my vocals are not quite warmed up yet. And um, prepping your guests too, making them feel comfortable. Like as soon as you start telling someone you're recording, people just shift and change. So you want to make sure that um, <clears throat> you give people an opportunity to just have a conversation while, um, while the recording has already started. Um, if you're doing interview format or conversation or whatever that looks like, um, you're still going to have to do sort of an introduction to that, what that looks like, um, an outro often people do, um, and then um, have fun during this time, right? This is the time where you're going to kind of go with the flow and, and, and know that if there's something that happens or there's things that mess up or mistakes that happen, that's something you can handle in post-production after you record and you can do some editing there. So after all that's done, you're making sure you got everything saved and everything's good to go. Um, you're going to go back to your office or whatever that looks like, back to your computer, and then you're going to listen to it. You're going to edit it. You're going to go through and say, I like how that sounds. Oh, this could be this and that. And this is where, you know, your software and that kind of thing are going to be very helpful. Um, and then where you can add in those clips that you collected at the beginning, you know, format it so you've got your intro, you've got maybe your sound in the middle, you've got your interview, you've got your sound out and your outro, whatever that looks like. And then, um, and then you'd be ready to kind of free it out to the world. Okay. Again, overall, this is kind of how to start a podcast. We're going to start by choosing a concept. What is something you're interested in? What is something that you would be very excited to talk about for a long time, week after week, or, you know, month after month, whatever that looks like to you. So for me, I'm um, from under the same stars, you know, I made it a very vague topic because oftentimes I like to step out of, you know, structured boxes of like check boxes or categories, but in some ways, um, you know, you need that flexibility, but like, I don't know if you mentioned, if you heard um, Jen and I speaking at the beginning, it's a balance between having that sort of flow, but also structure because, you know, you, you can kind of lose yourself in stuff. Uh, you want to pick a title then. And so for me, again, the concept for me was showing that we're all here together, that we um, can, you know, help each other. And these are how people are helping each other in their community. So my show title, I thought of, and I was like, wow, like I was under the stars one night and I was looking up and going like, I bet you other people are just looking up at the stars right now. And we're all under these same stars together. And I was like, oh, and that was the thing that I was thinking about. Now, the interesting part about the show title, though, is if you look that up, you might think my show is about stars, right? Or, you know, um, maybe it's about astronomy, maybe it's about whatever. So you have to be very aware of that piece of it. And that's not anything I really did. I didn't do a lot of pre-planning when I started my podcast there. It was quite new then, and there wasn't as much... Um, you know, opportunity for training or for, you know, other people who have done it before and kind of, you know, what their experiences were, they shared their stories about podcasting. You want to decide on what your format looks like. So structures like would be like, are you going to do, um, you know, uh, a half an hour, well, in length too. So half an hour interview with somebody, are you going to do, um, a narrative where you're, you're telling your own story for 15 minutes, or you're going to do a panel discussion where you have um, people coming in, or you're going to have co-hosts, all of these kind of things. Podcast artwork, um, you want to look at that. There's some very specific guidelines that um, Apple Podcasts requires. Um, it's got to be, you know, certain pixels and all that kind of stuff. Again, that was something that I wasn't aware of when I started. So it's like, again, we all learn together. And um, equipment and software, you know, again, very low entry. You can just use like, you know, my daughter has um, like gaming headphones, right? Like sometimes you can get them for even just like 20 bucks or whatever. Um, you can kind of go, you know, higher and higher with what you have. Like I've got like some pretty decent uh, equipment now that I've been, you know, podcasting and recording for my radio show at home. Um, but 
you know, I started, like I mentioned, just with like with these. So basically the big part is that you are, you know, exploring what you want to share and exploring what your voice wants to say. And then we'll uh, again, talk a bit about editing, exporting and publishing, but that'll be not as much, but uh, then you just let it go. So this will be a point here, um, you know, where you can kind of prompt like, why, why do I want to start a podcast, right? So, so for myself, um, I wanted to share an important message and have fun, basically. Um, but as things are shifting, you know, it, it's a good space for people to generate leads for business, right? Um, be recognized as a leader in your industry. So think about yourself, like, why are some of the reasons why you want to start a podcast? And I would love if someone like you could throw that up in the chat as well. And, um, and when we go back after, um, at the end, I'd like to discuss and, and just sort of see how people are feeling about it. Okay, so like I mentioned here, this is my podcast under the same stars. So I'm highlighting Indigenous and non-Indigenous people working to create positivity and unity in their communities across Turtle Island. And again, featuring narrative episodes, exploring my healing journey as an Indigenous person. So this is hosted on Anchor FM. So I'm gonna just close up the Jillian tabs here. And this is what it looks like when you go to the landing page. So Anchor FM is the hosting platform and um, you can create a platform or a podcast here for free. So people can go through and they can kind of find out, you know, I've got the interview, my latest interviews with Brenda McIntyre, Medicine Songwoman. And, um, and then I've got all of these things that you can kind of go back to the beginning and see all the different people. So um, you can listen on these different platforms. We've got Apple Podcasts, we've got Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast. So these ones here are the podcast directories that I talked about earlier. Um, and then um, you can listen on Spotify, which is Anchor and Spotify are kind of linked. So I will give you a peek behind the scenes after um, of what that looks like. Um, but just to give you a sense, that's the one I'm the most familiar with, but it's free and um, it's, it's very intuitive, pretty easy to use. Okay, so concept, this is like, you know, what's a topic? What's something that really lights you up? Something that's really important to you that you can talk about forever and ever. Um, and again, longevity. Um, people don't realize actually, again, how much work goes into podcasting. So again, you want to make sure that it's something that you're going to feel good talking about for a long time, right? And um, so this would be a prompt. So you've already thought about like why you wanna start a podcast, right? So what would it be about, right? So for me, I was like, well, um, again, I wanna highlight indigenous, non-indigenous people that are creating unity. So making a list of 10 or 12 people that you might be able to, to, get, to have guests for or some ideas for episodes. And how do the episodes link together? You know, is there a common theme or would each episode be separate? Or um, would you have different people on each episode? Like there's a lot of things to kind of think about, um, but it gives you a lot of opportunities. Um, and then search Apple Podcasts for your topic. You know, you wanna make sure like, you know, is someone already doing something similar and how is yours more unique than that and, or whatever. And so what are they doing well? What would you like to hear more of? So this is where, you know, the main directory is, and you can kind of go in and see the different types of, of topics and themes that there might be. So there's, there's a lot, there's lots of opportunity. So for arts, you could do a podcast, uh, you know, about the art practice that you do. You could do um, specifically about sharing your story. You could talk about food, fashion, anything. You can talk about music. You know, one of my favorite podcasts is um, Howler Pod, and it's a, it's like the one and only podcast about the Red Rising book trilogy. And I'm a like a book nerd too, so I like it because they go in and they break down each of the episodes, but they're very like it's the, the co-host and they're it's like they just talk like they're like they're friends, right? And it's like you're sitting in the kitchen with them and you're kind of like you know just having a good time. So it's that intimacy of podcasts that people really enjoy, right? It's the storytelling piece that like you get to, to kind of feel like you know someone. Um, another podcast that I like is called Faculty of Horror and it's a feminist podcast um, where there's there's two femmes that are talking about horror movies. And, and so typically um, horror movies are seen as like a male dominated and misogynist sort of genre of film, but you know they kind of break it down in different ways and going like, you know, and, and looking at feminist horror and things like that. So, you know, very widely variety of genres. You could really talk about anything. And so that's again the beautiful thing. So, you know, 
just kind of click through and see anything that like, you know, gets you excited, lights you up. Science, nature, kids, education, tons and tons of stuff. Okay. Check my time here. All right, show title. So your name, right? It defines the brand and what your artwork's gonna look like. If you have, if it's for a business that you're looking at, you might want to, oops, sorry. You might want to consider adding podcast or radio show to it or whatever that looks like. Um, so say for Under the Same Stars, I had a podcast and a radio show or, and a blog. So it would be Under the Same Stars blog, Under the Same Stars podcast, so that you know there's a distinction between what each of those platforms are. It could be um, your name, it could be your company. Again, think about when people are searching for you. And um, the other suggestions would be, you know, um, Apple Podcasts, when they're putting the descriptions for searching, it uses your title, uh, the title of your show and your name and any kind of descriptors you add. So like, say for my show would be like, um, hashtag indigenous, right? Hashtag culture, whatever that looks like. Um, and try to make it a specific title again. So under the same stars, people could just go, is that about astronomy? Like what, I don't even know what that means. Um, and then um, if you have a one or two word podcast name, add a brief description in the title to help the search results. So, um, you know, I could maybe go, I mean, under the same stars is probably a long title as it is, but I could say like um, under the same stars, like um, interviews with change makers across Canada or something or whatever, you know? Um, so there's, you know, there's lots to think about. So the description and the category. So after someone, the first thing someone's going to look at is, is your, is your name and your artwork. And then, and then they're going to read, you know, what the description is before they listen to it. So this is important too. So we want to make sure um, it's very self-explanatory, uh, under 150 words, search friendly, very succinct, um, plain language. And basically it, it lays out like how often you're doing it. So the frequency, it introduces who the host is or the co-host or, um, you know, what their credibility is and, and what is going to happen. So people just know, basically like at the start of this workshop, I did the outline, right? I said, this is what we're going to do today. This is kind of what it looks like. And so that's what you kind of want to give people when they come into the show, right? So with my own podcast, that's like kind of not super clear in my own description. And so it's like, it's very good for me to like, look at that, right? And go like, okay, well, there's tons of room for growth for everyone. So in our subcategories, you know, again, that was sort of uh, on that list that I showed you, like there could be like, um, you know, um, entertainment, but underneath would be music or whatever. And so you know, is your show you're thinking about about politics? Is it about news? Is it about culture? So this would be starting to to think about when you're about what podcast you want to do. Start with a statement that the listener already thinks is true. So it's like, um, you know, have you ever? Um, I can. I'm trying to think for my own podcast. I'm, I'll think about another one. Maybe it'll be like, have you ever? Or how about this? Have you ever wanted to start a podcast? Like that would be something like that, or like um, sharing, sharing our voices is so important. And, and then it kind of, you want to get, get people to continue to want to read the description and to want to be curious about what your podcast is about. Um, you want to tell the listeners what they can expect to hear in your show. So again, um, under the same stars, uh, their uh, Zhang Wei, Vanessa Kui interviews Indigenous and non-Indigenous change makers about how they are promoting unity in their communities, right? And who is the show for? Like, is there certain people you want to gear it for? And, you know, I feel like the best storytelling is when, you know, it's geared for everyone. And I think that's the part where it's, it's hard for me because when you niche down a bit more and we say niche, it's, it's, it's actually really good because it gives you an opportunity to put all of your energy into like one topic or one focus, right? So something to think about. And um, if people are comfortable, I'd love to kind of see in the chat too, like what you're thinking through, like what are some things that are coming up for you? And a big part of this too is, is self-reflection, right? Like when we're telling our stories, we want to go like, why, why do I want to tell this? Why is this important? Like, why do people need to hear this? Why is this relevant? Like, you know, and understanding, you know, that we are all healers and we heal by telling our stories and we heal ourselves in that way. You know, we just need to be given the, the space to do that. 
So some of the common formats are interviews, right? So a single host who interviews individual um, in their particular industry. So sort of that's kind of what I did with this with this podcast. There are scripted nonfiction ones. So there's like um, many um, podcasts in a row with a single theme um, on, a, on a full season. Um, I'm trying to think about what that might be um, an example of. I have a bunch of examples in the side here, but um, if you look at it, it's like, maybe you wanted to do a topic so let's think about healthcare maybe i wanted to do a topic about covid-19 right and so you know one whole season would be about covid-19 but maybe each episode would be about like what is covid-19 the next one would be like how it got here the next one would be like where are we now you know that sort of thing so um and then the next season might be maybe it's flu vaccines or maybe it's something totally different right so um, another format would be news recap, so a summary of current events with like a specific industry. So if I think of myself, like I do some solution focused healthcare reporting, you know, looking at, um, you know, people might do a daily podcast, like, you know, kind of going through, did you know today, um, the number of COVID cases was up to this. And so this is what the government is doing. This is what community members are doing and kind of going through that. Um, educational, so scripted nonfiction focusing on teaching. So um, it could be that you want to teach someone how to make a podcast. So, you know, every episode, this first episode would be choosing a topic, right? This is how we do that. The second episode would be then, you know, choosing a format, right? So giving people an opportunity to kind of, and again, on demand, you, you could listen to that binge listen. You could do it in, while you're washing the dishes. You could listen to things. You could go for a walk, you know, that's a really cool thing about a pub podcast as well. Um, and then scripted fiction, which is really, really cool too. And so it's similar to radio dramas and it's really often highly produced like a radio show would be um, or radio drama. So, you know, where there's actors and they, they speak through and they play, um, they play through a story and it's, it's really cool. And I can't think of the one I wanted to share, but I'll share it at the end. It's, it's a really, really cool podcast. Um, but basically, again, the world's your oyster. You can choose anything, right? But choose something that fits what your podcast is about and makes sense to it and what you're comfortable with, right? If you're not comfortable interviewing people, you don't maybe want to start with that as, you know, your main focus until you gain some of those skills first, right? Or maybe do those interviews and, and before you even like launch them to the world, right? Give yourself some space to go like, you know, is this what I want to do, right? The format of the show, um, you want to, you know, make it as long as it needs to be. Um, many podcasts are about 28 minutes because that's the average driving time. We're in COVID now. People really aren't driving anywhere. Um, I listen to podcasts that are up to three hours long sometimes where it's like a long conversation with people. Um, um, lots of like faculty for sometimes is about an hour, right? So I do that like washing the dishes, cleaning the house. Um, yeah, it's it, it just varies. It's just whatever you think you need to get that story across. Um, and then you can edit it down as you need to. And, and that's really cool about that too. And how often do you want to publish it? So that's your schedule. Is it going to be every day, every week, every month? And again, that develops that connection and relationship with your audience that they know what to expect from you and creates a habit to go, oh, I'm waiting to hear that today or whatever. It's Tuesday. I can't wait to see on my phone or whatever when that new podcast gets episode or gets launched. So the podcast artwork, this is where you're communicating what the subject matter is, right? Um, you want to make sure this, these requirements are, um, you know, it's square, it's like 3000 by 3000 pixels, all the resolution, all that kind of stuff and design it so that you can make it um, for like, if you want to have, um, you know, a website for it, if you want to have social media for it, like, you know, Instagram is, is like square and Facebook is it gives you different options, but if you want a Facebook um, wallpaper is a different dimension. And there are things you can do um, for that. So um, on Canva, Photoshop, Sketch, like those are types of programs where you can create your own artwork. And, um, um, but you can also hire a professional to do that. And there's lots of multimedia professionals that are, would be happy to do that for you. And you could tell them what you're looking for. And some people actually run a contest, you know, I'm launching this new um, podcast and I'm looking for artwork. This is the theme or whatever. I'm accepting, you know, whatever till this date, da, 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 da. So, yeah. Equipment. 
So, you know, the most important piece of equipment is a microphone because it makes you sound good. <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, but before, like, you know, you even get to that point, what keeps people listening is the story, right? And they could kind of put up with some, you know, not great audio if you have a really good story, if you are sharing um, and they're resonating with it. Um, but microphones are, are really a good start. So um, for myself, it's like, I get uncomfortable, a little bit cringy, like the beginning episodes of my series, you could see how inexperienced I am. And I think that's great. Like I still have lots of work to do, but, um, but I didn't use a microphone. Like when I was interviewing people, I just had the iPad between us because I just wanted it to be very natural, very, so as soon as you put a microphone on someone, I started to, to use a lav mic for, for guests that I was speaking to, and then it just changed everything. And so I'm trying to find innovative ways to sort of make that people feel um, more comfortable once the record button is starting. So yeah, all kinds of different um, microphones. Again, you can start with like low end, you can, you know, spend tons of money on it. But you know, I would get I would just say start with like, you know, your headsets, like your, your gaming headset, whatever you have, because, um, you want to just try it out, feel it out, see how you like to talk, see what things feel like. And, and again, start with your phone or whatever di device you have, like you can plug it into your computer, maybe that kind of stuff. Um, and just kind of practice speaking out loud, because I think part of it is, um, you know, even speaking in public situations, we, we often get kind of nervous about that. And um, it is so important to do that. So if you just get used to talking, you know, all the time, then it'll just come more naturally to you. And again, remembering that the content is the most crucial part of it. So that's why all this pre-planning stuff is like the big piece. I, this kind of reminds me of being like, I, I play guitar and I was talking to a friend of mine and I was like asking about like, what equipment do you think would be good to make this sound, whatever. And then it was like, practice would make you sound better. And I was like, oh, but that's true, right? Like you can have all the fancy equipment in the world, but if you haven't kind of developed what your voice is or know what that is, um, you know, that's something you got to work on. I love it. Okay. Editing. So this is where at the end, after like you've recorded everything and you're looking at, okay, we want to take out maybe some of the stuff that you can hear in the background. You might've heard you know, a dog barking or at some point, you know, maybe you have a show that you can't swear on. I mean, on podcasts, you can have that as well, but you just mark on the thing that there's explicit content. Um, but maybe someone swears accidentally and you want to take that out, right? This is where you would use a digital audio workstation or a DAO to do that. And this would be, um, if you have um, iTunes or Apple products, you would have Lots of things come pre-installed with GarageBand, but that's free or open source. And so is Audacity. The thing with Audacity for myself, I use GarageBand myself, but um, Audacity has quite a steep learning curve at the beginning, um, but it's something that I'm learning right now. And, um, you know, it's again, just taking, you know, what you feel works best for you in your own learning curve. So this here um, is where you would um, <clears throat> kind of put your structure together. So you would put like, your pre-recorded stuff, if you have advertisements, if you have music, Let me take a quick drink here. And then I like it, editing is where things get real. And this is where a lot of people um, give up because it is like, when I first started to, I was like, I'm not gonna even like edit anything. It's just gonna be like, this is the conversation unscripted. Like this is what it is. And then um, I ran into some problems because then, I was having a hard time wrapping up some of my interviews and in the time allotted, or we would go on a tangent and that kind of thing. And I'd sort of go, what do I do with this? Right. So that's where the pre-production, the pre-planning takes like, um, you know, it makes you work smarter, not harder. So you don't have to do all this editing and things at the end. Right. I hope that makes sense. This is kind of what it looks like though. And like there's separate tracks for, for each person's voice and that sort of thing. Um, and right now we aren't really recording, you know, with each other, right? We are doing long distance format. So, you know, this is a really good way to, you know, Zoom has been coming, becoming like one of the big things um, because people are using it for their meetings and that you can hit record. There's separate, you know, um, 
vocal tracks, that kind of thing. Um, the part that I don't really care for for Zoom is, is sometimes that um, the audio recording is not the, the best. Um, Squadcast is something that people um, have been using a lot, similar to Zoom, but Zencaster is what I use and um, it's, it works really, really well. And, um, and they've actually just added a, a, a video option, which they didn't have before. And um, yeah, because I think it's really important to see people when you're having a conversation. So there's lots of really cool software and, and like um, Zencaster, they do have a free option, but if you want to do some editing, it's a paid uh, prescription, prescription, subscription. This is my nurse practitioner brain there. Um, yeah, and so yeah, just kind of play with those. I'll put all those links at the end. I'm conscious of time here, but um, here are some other considerations. So uh, writing your podcast outline, where you're gonna record, right? Like that's a big part. So picking the right place to record is more important than buying like the right headphones, all that kind of stuff, because you can deal with the audio stuff before it happens, right? So some people actually record um, right in their closets and just like put blankets around them because it really insulates if you don't have a lot of space. But in I, like my space right now, I have a quite, quite a big room um, and so, I can just leave my microphone kind of open. So it's just kind of testing it out, listening to what it sounds like back. Um, uh, consider creating an introduction, like how, like a trailer too, like so people could listen to maybe like a 30 second or even, you know, 10 second trailer. Um, are you gonna have a theme song? What is that gonna be? You have to think about copyright, all of that stuff. And then when you launch it, do you want to have one day where it's like, this is where it starts, or you're just going to kind of trickle them out and then just kind of see how it goes, right? So lots to think about. Some potential challenges, rambling, right? So writing an outline for the episode and points you want to cover is really helpful. Um, again, where you're recording, you could have echoes or other sounds, you know, maybe you like to sing in the shower because there's like a lot of echoes and a big sound there, but it's not a great place to record because it, there's a lot of um, hard surfaces. So you want to make sure there's like, if you have a small space, like I said, and I spelt absorbent weird. And um, in the closet, maybe you have or, like lots of carpeting, blankets, all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're pretty much at the end. I, got, I know we have about 10 minutes um, before the end of the workshop. So I wanted to give space for discussion and things, but here are some things to think about yourself. So, you know, what are the podcasts that you listen to now, right? Why, again, kind of back to the beginning, like, why do you listen to them? What do you like about them? Um, what do the, the, the hosts talk about that you like? Is it the topic? Is it the format? Do you like that they're short? Do you like, you know, that they're longer episodes? Um, when are you listening to it? Do you listen to it when you're in the car? You know, whatever that looks like. Do you listen to it when you go for a walk? Are you, you know, whatever you're doing? Um, and um, what would you change about it if it was your show? You know, what, what, would, you, what would you like to see? And um, the two big things before you do anything. So why do you want to start a podcast and how do you want to share your voice? So those are huge. Um, I'm going to just check to see. Here's some resources here, but like I mentioned, I'm going to um, throw a bunch of stuff in the chat before the end and um, that will be on the link. So um, if you want to get a hold of me, um, you can check out my website. It's at welcomediseaseplace.com or jeanwaybenisequay.com. And um, yeah, I'm on social media, um, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter at jeanwaybenisequay. And yeah, you can listen to my podcast, all those kind of things. And I'm so, so happy that I am here today. And I'm excited that we get to chat now. And can I maybe make Jen back the host? I don't know how to do that though. Thank you. <laughs> Let me see. Um, click on my name. And then there are going to be three dots. And you can put me back as the host. Yes. Where are you? There you are. Under AGM. <laughs> Look, where are you? Oh. Oh, apparently I can oh, make you a co-host. I guess I can't make you the host. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. Whew. All right. I know. Stressful. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Thank you so much for sharing that. Very insightful. Um, as well, Chris, uh, Crystal, are you okay with sharing that PowerPoint presentation? Yes. You know what? I think that'll be easier if we just share it out to everyone. I'll just remove some of the personal like slides that I... No, you can add that so people know about you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll do that. And um, I think that'll be easier because all the slide, um, you know, the links and stuff will be on there. So we have a question here from Sabra. If you know, oh, so it's about royalty-free music. So I don't know if you want to answer that. 
where you can find royalty fee music for your intro to you your know, podcast. I or... don't actually use music in my podcast. I use what is actually available on the, the Anchor FM for sounds. And then when I do my own hand drumming song at the end, it's my own song. So I'm not as comfortable answering that question because I just was like, that's something I just was like, I don't know much about it. So um, I, I do actually. So I do. So, so you can, uh, Anchor FM does have sound bites and music you can use, but on YouTube, they have, there's royalty free music. So just type in royalty free music, even on your browser and it'll come up and you can use that up to 30 seconds or something uh, is like the law. So try that. And so Ceci, I'm thinking of hosting a podcast centered around sketch noting a commonplace journal. Is that too specific? Should I broaden my topic? No, not at all. If that's what you want to do. Exactly. It's literally, this is the best part of it. It's like, do anything. And I would love to know more about that, honestly. Right. And so I don't know, keep going. I'm just looking at your, uh, things here. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming to this like early session. And uh, for anyone that's like, i um, going to be watching on YouTube after like, I'd be happy to like, if you want to like, reach out or whatever, and just like, do that. What are the rules with swearing? So um, as long for podcasting, it's quite open as long as you're upfront with it and just say that there's explicit content. Um, that's all that there is like that that's what the the difference between that and say like for my radio show like we're following like you know guidelines that you can't do those things right whereas in this you can but you just have to let people know and give them advance warning of like you know whatever the content will be and if anyone has any questions after you can add crystal to Zongwei to instagram and you can even dm her and i added that as well but we will be adding all that information in the email after yes. all right thank you so much everyone we hope you enjoyed this hopefully it's sunny where you are <laughs> sunny and warm i'm just reading all the comments editing is a challenge it's always a challenge is there a software that's easy to follow for editing Long way. Uh, for the editing process. Um, so there's a lot of videos. There's a lot of YouTube videos to show you. Um, GarageBand, I kind of learned by watching videos. It's again, a very intuitive thing. If you were getting more like advanced or you wanted to take on like a new project, and you were like really gung ho, I would say Audacity would be the next thing to do. But again, that learning curve at the beginning is quite steep. Um, but yeah, so for me, it's, it's been GarageBand has been easy and just watching YouTube videos. Like there's a lot of people now that are doing a lot of similar things. And even if it's not podcasting, it might be like musicians about like, you know, how they're editing their music or like people who are, are doing, um, I can't think like vlogs, right. And like using their voices just, um, you know, as, as a way to, to share their voice in that way and not a podcast format. So I hope that was helpful. This has been great. Keep tuning in, everyone. Thank you so much for being here again. One more. Oh, I'll just answer this last question because I just see it here. So you mentioned um, at the beginning using voice and storytelling as medicine. Have you ever dealt with the fear of speaking and using your voice in general? Yes, I still do. You know, even today, right? Like every day it's, it's, it's like, it's reminding yourself that you know, you, you have it all within you and like the fears and stuff that's normal. So trying to reframe that and going like, it's excitement, right? It's like, this is important to me. And that's why I'm afraid I want to do a good job. Right. And, and kind of leaning into that. Um, and that's kind of how I try to overcome those kind of things. Um, a lot of grounding, right? So giving yourself like a second, like at the beginning, like it was, even when you're doing the land acknowledgement, like I was just like taking a breath, right. And like, yeah, I'm connected to this land. I'm here. Like, you know, I'm connected to the earth, right? Going, just giving yourself a second and breathing is a big part of podcasting, right? And, and in your voice. So making you have all of that breath. So I hope that helps. Um, books and tips. Um, nothing that I can think of in general that I've used, but again, I just, I'm so inspired by listening to other people's stories. So it's like immersing yourself in the stories that you love, right? So it's like the books that you love, you know, fiction and nonfiction, you know, podcasts, listen to different voices, different perspectives, and it'll just inspire you. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. And also just, you know what, you're here, you, you're here in the, in the world to, to share your voice and never be scared because someone is always going to listen. And just by, if you want to do a podcast or you do that, or you do any type of storytelling, you will make someone's day a little bit better. Yes. On that note, we will see you at the next. Uh, how do you follow on IG? Why don't you share that right now? I shared it off the top. At Zhongwei Benise Kui. I just put it in the chat. And um, yeah, love it. We'll email you all with all of this information. Have a wonderful day, guys. Enjoy it. Stay Bye. safe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom. Bye. Oh, thank you. I love it. I know it's always so fulfilling, right? Ah, oh, so good. Thank you so much. Um, I will follow up. I'll follow up with you for the other stuff, yeah, like the other good. upcoming, and have a wonderful day. Yes, you I'll too. message you. I'll text you. Bye. Bye.